made up some time. It's now about 20 minutes after seven, so we're back on track. Um, and ready to begin our uh, main presentation, feature presentation for the evening, which is, as uh, it appears on this uh, sheet that I made sure each of you have, uh, tonight we are going to focus on methods and techniques to empower our neighborhood. And our neighborhood is West Unity. I've noticed that there are uh, several people here from outside the area, um, but I just want to point out to everyone that we're going to focus this evening on methods and techniques to empower our West Utica neighborhood. And that's mentioned in bold type at the top, mentioned in the first paragraph in the text, and it's also mentioned at 7.30 uh, in the agenda at the bottom of the page. And I say that because uh, we're going to stick to those items as the focus for our uh, forum this evening. Uh, last month, I, I make a point of it this month because last month, we were joined by some people who uh, seemed to want to make uh, it about other things and maybe another agenda. But this is the agenda. We're going to hold to this agenda. And if someone starts to sidetrack us, I will intervene to get us back onto this agenda. Yes. Excuse me, Mr. Trent. As you know, I was a candidate for Common Council last year for the first ward. And the first ward includes both East and West Utica. So I think you should amend this to say first ward. That's my objection. OK, I'll take that under consideration. But this is Citizens Forum. First ward. Uh, well, it's the West Utica <laughs> Citizens Forum. This also includes part of the second. Uh, so, uh, and the featured speaker who will inform us, and when I say inform, the West Utica Citizens Forum is a venue for information, communication, and engagement. Uh, and so our program tonight is to inform us on methods and techniques to empower our neighborhood. Uh, the presentation will be done by uh, John Berg, who is over here in the handsome blue suit. Uh, and he's the uh, Northern and Central New York Regional Director for Reclaim New York. Reclaim New York is a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization that empowers New Yorkers through <coughs> education and civic engagement. And we're, I, we have uh, refreshments which were catered and brought in. Uh, courtesy of uh, Mr. Byrne and, and his uh, organization. And feel free to uh, enjoy them to your pleasure. Um, they're excellent, I believe. I haven't tried them yet, but I will be in the moment. So I think that's all I have to offer. I would like to uh, introduce Mr. John Mike Neal. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tim. Uh, thank you, Al, for the great facility here that uh, we're, we're partaking in here this evening. Uh, and thank you to everybody for showing up this evening. I believe that anyone that wants to come to this forum is here to learn. That's what we're here to, uh, to, to do. And I am going to present some information to you this evening. And uh, some may agree, some may not agree. But I'm here to present that information to you, and hopefully you can walk away this evening with whatever opinion uh, you would like to make of it, and we can move forward in a happy fashion. Now, the last time I was here, it seemed like you know we had a few questions getting asked all at the same time. So to alleviate that problem, uh, if I could get Tim and Mike to pass out some uh, index cards to everybody. I'm going to give everyone an, an, an index card. 
Everyone can feel free to fill their question out on there. I would advise that you wait till toward the end so you know uh, what piece of information you want to ask some information on. I'm going to allow the people from Utica to uh, present their questions first because this is for the people in Utica, West Utica primarily. And Mr. Lou, I, I apologize, but this is the West Utica uh, Senior Club. So, uh, and then after that, we will get to everyone else's questions. If we make it through all the first round of questions, by all means, we'll go through a second round of questions, okay? That's what I'm here to do, is to make sure that you guys get the information. And I want to try to keep this as civilized as possible, okay? So I appreciate everyone's attention as we move forward through the training, or through the, the presentation, excuse me. So, the affordability crisis. Reclaim New York is a non partisan, non-profit organization, okay? There are some people that may say otherwise, but we don't care what party anyone's in when they're not doing something that we feel is in the best interest of New Yorkers, because that's what we're in this for. Proof of this is just the other day in the Senate, when the governor came out and said, we need to have stronger FOIL laws, the New York State Senate, which is the majority are Republicans, we came out and said that they were wrong because they said no to it. We feel that information is your information. So we don't care if somebody's a Republican or a Democrat. We want to make things better in New York, and we feel that through uh, transparency and affordability, we can make New York a better place to live. I live here. I live here with my wife and my 10-year-old daughter. I want to make sure she gets a great education here in New York. More importantly, I want to make sure she stays in New York after she graduates. Is there anyone in the room that has had a family member, a friend, or a relative leave New York? Okay, We call that the outward migration of New York, and there's a reason for that, and we're going to be discussing that this evening. So again, the process we like to go through with, with New York is we like to educate citizens. This flag, I served our country for that flag, and I served it for the people in this room. And the reason I did that was I feel very strongly about the values in our country. Our country is the only country that sits there and it's for the people. It's government by the people and for the people, okay? That's very important. And the one thing you can't forget when you say by the people and for the people, that's your government, you need to participate. Okay? It doesn't mean you go home and you watch TV and when you're upset about something, you throw the remote control at the TV and say, oh my God, they just did that to me again. It's about participating in your government. And that doesn't mean you have to go in there and be critical of everything. If you support something your government is doing, it's just as important to go in and tell them that you support what they're doing. Okay? So can I have, by a show of hands, the last time that somebody has interacted with their government? You raise your hand. Yes, ma'am. When was the last time you interacted with your government? Uh, me? Yes, ma'am. Uh, a couple of months ago. A couple of months ago. And what did you do, may I ask? I visited uh, Schumer's office and Joe Grant's office. Very good. So direct engagement with your elected officials. Yes, sir. Public hearing on overriding the tax, tax cap for you. Okay. Direct engagement again. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Back in November, I went to a town council meeting to get them to restore our town pool. You went to a town meeting for? To get them to bring back our town pool. To bring back the town pool. Okay, okay. thank you, sir. Maybe? Westmoreland. Met Westmoreland. I know they were doing it up there as well. Yes, sir. I talked to Jim Pagola today. <laughs> okay, <And> that's fair. <laughs> Go to every single town council meeting for the last seven years. Wow. Great job. That's all to you, sir. <laughs> the two things you cannot get out of, right? Death and taxes. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, Mr. Luke? A public presentation to deal with the city budget. Outstanding. Outstanding. Speaking up to your representatives, that's great. To the Attorney General's office to complain that Dunkin' Donuts was charging 60 cents for water. <laughs> okay. Well, that's uh, yeah, that's an interesting, uh, interesting comment there. I grew up down in New Jersey when I was a, a, a 
young kid, I remember at a place called White Castle Hamburger, they put these things on the bathroom doors at public restaurants where you had to put a quarter in to go to the bathroom. And my mom used to say, just slide under. <laughs> yes. Uh, but in all sincerity, folks, believe it or not, I will tell you that everybody in this room interacted with government probably less than an hour ago. Some folks walked down the sidewalks. Some folks drove here in their car. When you woke up this morning, if you live in the country and you flush your toilet, or if you live in the city and you take a shower, when you run that water, that money's going to the government, whether it be through your power bill or whether it be through your utility bill for the water. You're interacting with government. You're interacting with government because those roads, they don't belong to the government, they belong to you guys. They're your roads, okay? People interact with government every moment of every day and they don't realize it. And that's the thing that we want to get people to realize is that's your government, okay? You have to interact with them uh, when you want something done because you're interacting with them all the time. All I'm going to get accomplished here tonight is identify uh, some of the problems with uh, the affordability crisis in here in New York. We want to actually do something that not many people have ever done. We're going to quantify the impact. So you can see how it affects your bottom dollar at the end of the year. Uh, identify some real world solutions. Okay? With problems, it's easy to sit at home, throw that remote control and say we have problems, but we have to come up with solutions to fix these things. Okay? And we want to teach you how to take action on these things. Okay? Because without you, nothing's going to change. So the affordability crisis and what, what that does to us, I think a little while earlier we had probably 60 to 70 percent of the people here say that they knew people that left New York. Okay? And we want to try to figure out why are people leaving New York. Here's a reason why people are leaving New York. Again, as we go through this presentation, if you think everything is perfect, in New York, in Utica, New York, then you're all set. But for people that want to make a change, that's what this is really about. So the affordability crisis, at Reclaim New York, we took things to another level. If you open up your folders that you have in front of you, and I don't have one up here, but if you open those folders up, you will see that you have in there uh, a little picture of a family what we did was we went through the census data and, and combed through gobs and gobs of data. And we found out what the median household income was. And we did this by zip code, okay? The reason why we had, had to do this by zip code, anyone have an idea why we did it by zip code? We did it by zip code because everyone pays a different sales tax depending on what county you live in. And then when you get into some cities and towns, you pay an additional tax there. But we had to do that. That's why when people came in and signed in, we like to know what zip code they're from, not because we have some, uh, you know, ship or something, you know, looking around at everyone's zip code. But it depends on that because, or we depend on that to find out what your sales tax rate is. Now, if you look at your uh, median household income here, uh, thirty-seven thousand dollars, you can look at what's left at the end of the day. Okay. So for a single uh, income, median household, it's $20. You go to the next page, and when you double it, double median income, $78,000, actually $79,000, they're only left with $2,000. And the reason is, the more you make, the more they take, okay? Uh, the, the young person over here, is actually bringing home 69. That's supposed to represent a college, recent college graduate. We, what we do is we look at what we call the wake up costs. When you wake up in the morning and you plant your feet on the ground, it's going to cost you so much just to be here and live in New York. You're going to be paying that water bill. You're going to pay an electric bill. You're going to be paying all these bills, and there's surcharges on all these bills. Cell, cell phone bills, you've seen all the surcharges on that. This is what we refer to as your wake-up costs, and it includes your taxes. It does not include money for college. 
It does not include money for a new car. It does not include money for home repairs. It does not even include money to buy your home. Actually, I might stand corrected on that because I think that that might be in there. Uh, we do have rent in there. So, um, so these are all your wake-up costs. And what's left at the end of the day is not much. And that is the problem here in New York because people are not left with a lot of money at the end of the day. So we want to try to figure out why this is happening. So again, some people may feel that they've got plenty of money at the end of the day. Again, if you do, then you have no problems. But there are a lot of us that don't feel that way. So again, what's left at the end of the day? $2,000, I think that was for the double median income, right? $2,000, family of four. The recent grad, they come home with $7,000. Uh, I remember my dad once told me, when you're single, your pockets jingle or something like that. Um, so that, that they, they, they make out a little bit better. But still, it's not a lot of money. So what happens when you're bringing home, at the end of the day, you wind up with a negative $20. So what do you do? I know that a lot of people will take out a loan they'll dip into their credit cards and things of that nature. And that's when things really kind of start getting wrong. Average credit card debt, $7,200. 10 and a half years, 10 and a half years, pay it back at the minimum payment. But the thing is, you're not gonna have money to pay it back. Because if every year it's negative and negative and negative, you're just gonna get deeper in debt. So that's a big problem here in New York. So, I guess what we have to figure out is why is this happening? Why is that happening to us? Why are we running out of money? Why are people leaving New York? Well, if you look at some of the uh, ratings for New York in different categories, you'll realize that New York is an expensive place to live. Now again, some people might think it's just fine, but some people may have a problem with it. Personal income taxes, 49. Property taxes, 47. Sales taxes, 42nd. Excise tax, which is also called a sin tax, but they put that on your gas, on your diesel, and things of that nature. You're 39th. Overall, New York has the worst climate, tax climate that there is. And look, if, if you look, okay, if you look why that's happening, my, my slides kind of got a little messed up here. But there's a reason why this is happening, and we have to try to figure out why this is happening, okay? Um, so we believe that there's a correlation between transparency and how much money is left. I believe right here in Utica, you have the nano uh, building that they put up, and I don't think that they're really employing too many people there, are they? I think the last I heard, I heard somebody down in Albany bragging about one job. And that's, you know, so much money went into that. And whose money is it? It's everyone's, right? Everyone in New York put the money into that. So what we're doing at Reclaim New York is we want to figure out why is that happening. The only way you can figure out why is you need to be able to look at it, that information, okay? So New York, we've done this all over the state, okay? And what we are trying to do is uh, look into where is this money going? Why is it happening? And things of that nature. We are going through what we call the FOIL process. In other words, freedom of information law. It's a way that the public can access the records of the government. And the reason for that is we have a government by the people for the people. So those are your records. And anyone that says otherwise is wrong. Those records belong to the people, to the people's records. So we're trying to figure out uh, why this is happening. And if you look at the, the tax consequence for different parts of the state, uh, Oneida is 2,800. Take a look at Herkimer, 1,900. They're a little bit cheaper, especially Lewis, okay? Lewis County, interesting thing about Lewis County is, does anyone know where the city is in Lewis County? There isn't one. Lewis County doesn't have a city. They have Lowellville, but that's a town and a village, okay? But you look at the amount they pay in taxes, then look at things like Onondaga, where they're at 38, 37, 38, 
$700, okay? So they're paying a lot more. Here. So, and we found that, we found this, and this is all public information that everybody is uh, able to see. The worst part about New York, 49th and business climate. If you have it, how many business owners do we have in the room? Do we have any business owners? One business owner. That's it, one business owner? Without small business, what's gonna happen? We can't all work for the government, okay? Small business is the engine of our economy. And if the business owners leave, what's gonna happen with their employees? They're gonna either leave or they're gonna go on un unemployment. So we should all be concerned with this. Now, New York is not the most expensive place to live. There is one state that's a little more expensive, and that is Hawaii. And I'll tell you, this winter, I could have, could have used a little time in Hawaii paying more money, but uh, Hawaii is the most expensive, but New York is second to them. And we shouldn't be second to an island, you know? I mean, that's, it's terrible. And the only reason Hawaii is so expensive is all the goods, how did they get there? Either a ship or a plane, right? So I mean, there's no reason why it should be that expensive to live here in New York. Uh, New York, it's, it's very expensive. Uh, and again, I know that I feel that there are things that we can do better with our economy here in New York. But if you feel that you're getting a rate of return from your government for the money you pay in taxes, and I think in Utica, you just you started off at, what, 4%, then you went up to, was it 6, and now you're 5.5, and, and now you're up to 6 point something for your, your, your city taxes here. So, you know, that kind of hurts, you know, that, that kind of tax increase. Did you get that kind of a uh, increase from your wages at work? Did you get a, everyone get a 7 or 8% raise at work? You know? So it makes it challenging. Okay, and that's what you have to ask yourself because if you are getting your money's worth, again, you should be all set. Albany's approach to things, like the nano facility, is central planning. Okay, we all see that Albany takes our taxes and they give money to big projects throughout the state. And look at where we are. Look at the Buffalo Billion, right? We're paying for those court cases. Right? We're paying for the lawyers in those court cases. So we're, we're not just losing when we give the money away, but when the folks uh, get arrested and they're under indictment, we're the ones paying for that. So we're just paying over and over and over again, and that's got to occur. Um, our Medicaid program, okay? I don't know if everyone in the room is aware of it. We used to have more population than Florida. Now they have more than us. But yet we still pay 69% more in Medicaid for a population that is actually smaller than Florida. And their budget is about half of our budget. So something's got to be wrong here. We have to figure out what's wrong. Now in Florida, I almost guarantee you, they're not putting up, you know, spending millions and millions of dollars to put up businesses that don't have anyone working there. So we have to somehow try to make a, a change to make that better. Uh, government employees, on average, make 40% more than private sector workers. I heard one business owner in here, okay? I know that some of the folks in here may work for government, and great, they're probably doing a great job, but the size of our government and our spending in the government needs to get looked at because something's got to change there. Uh, New Yorkers spend more than double the national average on K-12 education. Now, we used to be ranked within the top five, but now we're only 19, okay? And again, there are citations, I should have mentioned this before, there are citations on every slide that we have up here. So if you'd like to look that up, and this was ranked by a, a national uh, organization. So uh, again, that should be concerning to folks. We're at 19. Minimum wage increase, 
$15 minimum wage, again, that's going to make it tough on the small business owners. And then when those small business owners leave, there's not going to be a lot left. So looking down the road, how is this going to affect us? I guess that, that is the question. What is happening here in New York? And we, we touched on it lightly. I'm going to give you two comparisons, okay? You have a college graduate in New York State. They get out of college, they're making about 100 grand a year. Pretty good money, right? You got somebody in Texas, they graduate from college, they're making 100 grand a year. They're both making the same exact amount of money, okay? In Texas, it takes them five years to save up for the down payment on their home. A $200,000 home, and they want to save up for it. It takes them five years to save up for it. In New York, the same price home, the same income, it's going to take them 15 years to save up for it. And we wonder why our youth are leaving New York, okay? Mm -hmm. We call it the out-migration capital of the U.S. because there are so many people leaving the state of New York, okay? That statistic is wrong. It used to say, it used to be 1.8 million. Uh, we're up to 2 million people leaving. And they're leaving for a reason, okay? They're not just leaving because it's warmer in Montana or, you know, in Florida, you can say, okay, it's warmer in Florida. But there is a multitude of reasons why people are leaving New York. And I think one of the biggest ones is it hurts our pocket. New York is an expensive place to live. And again, if everyone in here feels that this is not a problem, <coughs> fine. But there are a lot of folks that are in this room that have family that has left New York and they miss them. I remember back in 2014, I was running for office. I went to a home of a friend of mine from many years ago, knocked down the door, talked to the parents, and they said, yeah, our kids moved. One was in California, one was in Hawaii, the most expensive state, right? But they moved. Two years later, I went back to that door, and they said, they had moved, their house was for sale. Because what happens is, when the kids leave, and they have children, when they have children, if you're a grandparent now, you're still in New York, you miss your kids, you miss your grandkids, you want to spend time with your grandkids, so what are you going to do? A lot of people leave. Okay? This, this should concern these people. And there's a reason, okay? And, and this, it's, it's going to get worse, okay? I can tell you, to turn it around, it's going to take a lot of work, and the only people that are going to turn around are the people in this room. It's the only way it's going to change, by you get involved with government. So we've seen the pattern. We refer, we refer to it as the New York economic death spiral, or the Empire State economic death spiral. If the folks on this half of the room leave, and the folks on this side stay, you're still going to drive home on the same roads. But you don't have these folks to pay for the roads. Now, do you think the government is going to cut the price to drive on those roads in half? Not going to happen, is it? The price will probably go up. And what will happen is the folks on this side of the room get to shoulder the burden. Okay? So your taxes will go up if these people leave. And that should be concerning. Okay? Because the more people leave, the worse the situation gets. The last time I was here, I remember a gentleman stood up and he said that his daughter had left because she doesn't want to be here. He bought her a house. She sold the house. I don't know if she sold it, but I know she left. He said she left. Okay? And that's got to, everyone's got to be worried about that. Because I know I want my daughter to be somewhere where I can spend time with her and our grandchildren. So what's happening in New York? People in New York are starting to quit. They're starting to give up. They're not involved. Okay? And you know they're not involved. It's very clear, very clear trend, okay? Look back in 1974, okay? You had almost 80% of the public voting in this election, okay? 80%, okay? Now, this is not an anomaly, anomaly, okay? This is a steady trend that's forming here. You fast forward to 2014, 
You had about 27%, 28%. People are not getting involved anymore. They're not getting involved. The only way it's going to change is if people get involved. It's a freedom. People look at it as a freedom to vote, a right to vote. It's a responsibility to vote. If you don't vote, you have no reason to complain. So this is important, okay, because this, this trend is what's happening here. This is in New York. You know, everyone in this room should be outraged. There are people that died, and there are people dying today for the right for all of us to vote. And all you have to do is exercise that right to respect the people that died for our right to vote. <clears throat> So we see a correlation between what I refer to as <coughs> transparency and the affordability in New York, like I had mentioned before. There's a, there's a correlation, and one is driving the other, and the other drives that one. It goes back and forth, okay? Because if nobody in here knew what their government was doing, they might not do what you want them to do. And the reason they might not is just because they don't know. I'm not saying go in there and, and boo and hiss them. Just interact with them. Write them a letter. Go to a meeting and speak. Lou, Lou went to the meeting and spoke, he said. You know, go to a meeting and speak. Be respectful, but speak to them, you know. Let them know how you feel about different things. 